So once again, I've managed to decimate Neil's humour. <laughs> So let's try for this one then. Um, let's head over to our vacuum desiccator. What Neil's doing is actually connecting the desiccator to the vacuum pump. And what that will do is suck all the air molecules, any moisture, absolutely everything that's in this desiccator, uh, that's molecular size, out. So the idea is that those eggs will be under vacuum and essentially it's as if they're in space. There are no atmospheric pressure, uh, nothing like that affecting the egg and therefore there's nothing to stop the, the fondant inside the egg pushing outwards. So now the vacuum's coming on. Oh, a sudden pop on the uh, chocolate shell and then now it's really coming out. So it's under the vacuum and so all the tiny air bubbles that were in the fondant um, are gradually expanding and exploding out and what we're seeing there is a, a foam, foam egg. We foamed it up, we'll see what happens when we actually uh, reintroduce the atmospheric pressure back into the vessel. So we'll turn the vacuum off. Oh wow. We've not got the vacuum anymore. The pressure's being exerted back onto the egg, which is why all the fondant collapsed down really quickly. There we go, so you can see it actually split like that. Do you know what that looks like to me? What does it look like? Another clean-up job for Neil. It does look like a clean-up job for Neil. And chocolate, or particularly cocoa butter, has a very complicated crystal structure. You can have several different forms. And if you get the wrong form, the chocolate melts at too low a temperature, makes your hands all sticky. So there is some extremely cunning chemistry in getting the chocolate to crystallise. So this is potassium chlorate. So I call it bottled oxygen because it's a simple chemical, an inorganic material which contains lots of oxygen. So when you heat it, it gives up all that oxygen and then it can react. We've broken up the lumps, now we need to fuse it. So to fuse the salt, we have to melt it. And you can see, we have a Bunsen burner. The salt, you can see, is starting to melt. So it's fusing. And we're ready to start putting in some sugar or perhaps something like a cream egg. So yes, here is our egg in the tongs, and now we're going to try and release the goo. Go! More heat, more heat! I want the goo out. That's where the sugar is. I think that's final chemical proof that the goo is where it's at. Oh, what smoke? Neil, look at this. <laughs> so once again, I've managed to decimate Neil's humour. <laughs> <laughs> so, go on, again. So once again, I've managed to make a mess in my friend's fumard. Anyway, I've got to go and give a lecture now, so see you later, Neil. <laughs> if we think about the cream egg, the lovely gooey stuff, which is really rich in sugar and nice and runny and mobile, which can react very quickly with the potassium chlorate, is trapped inside a box of chocolate. And the chocolate wasn't particularly reactive, so once we break open the, the egg and release the goo, it reacted very, very rapidly with all the oxygen given off by the potassium chlorate decomposing to see the wonderful flare. Fantastic. Very, very hot though. Managed to break our evaporating basin. I'd expect that the sugar will react chemically quite differently from the chocolate because the sugar contains carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, approximately in the formula CH2O, whereas the fats in the, in the chocolate are much more rich in hydrogen much less oxygen. Fill this up with liquid nitrogen if we can. We're going to drop in Cadbury's cream egg and see what happens. So the Cadbury's cream egg, which is actually quite warm because I've been handling it and it's in this room, 
it's causing the uh, liquid nitrogen to evaporate really quickly. And we're going to let this freeze in here for a while. Okay, so we have our cream egg freezing over here in liquid nitrogen. But when I was a student, my teachers always told me to be a good scientist, you have to do control experiments. So what we're going to do is, we'll see what happens when we smash the cranberries cream egg that's at room temperature. So this is at about 25 degrees or so. <laughs> so it makes a bit of a mess, which Neil is going to have to clean up, yeah, I'm afraid. <laughs> that's the theme of the day, it seems. <laughs> Okay, so we've had our cream egg sitting in liquid nitrogen for a few minutes now. So we're going to see what happens when we uh, hit it with our mallet. So here's our frozen cream egg. So this one has been, it's, uh, it's at about minus 200 degrees C. So it's frozen solid. And I'm going to hit it with my mallet and see what happens. <laughs> it made quite a nice mess here. <laughs> Neil, that's one for you, mate. <laughs> <laughs>